Reality check for consumers. Bank rate reporting interest rates on retail store credit cards hitting an all-time high, a hair under 30 percent. So how much more can consumers withstand in this rising rate environment? Let's bring in personal finance expert Susie Orman. Susie hosts the Women and Money podcast as a co-founder of emergency saving startup Secure Save. Susie, it is an honor to have you here Aww. on the Fast Money set. It's fantastic to see you after all. This I time. know, my friends, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> you are back. And, you know, people think about you and they think about personal finance advice. You're really almost like a fast money trader, too, because you've got a whole stock portfolio, which we'll get into. But for consumers, they're really strapped these days. Um, you know, affordability for homes is at a record uh, low. They've got the credit card debt. How should we think about rates and how you can take advantage of, of rates right now? Listen, the only good thing about these high interest rates are putting money into treasuries, um, I think last time I was on told you that the majority of my money, that kind of money, mm -hmm. was going into three- and six-month treasuries because I did think interest rates were going to continue up. And now I think the play may start to be in long-term treasuries. So I've started to dip my toe in. Every time the 30-year crosses 5 percent, I buy. Every time. And it's done it like twice, I think, now. Now it's back down to 4.8. Right, because when interest rates eventually do go down, I don't know when that will happen. Mm -hmm. One percent move down is a twenty percent interest, a twenty percent capital gain in that stock in the bond. So I can play a bond even more now than a stock in a certain level. But I don't know when the top of this bond market is going to be. But I'll let it show it to me. Mm -hmm. Susie, there are few people in this country who have a better pulse of, uh, of the U.S. consumer mm -hmm. and, and what their want to do is with their excess savings and the like. How do you think about, so to your point about putting money in treasuries, and, and it's a guaranteed risk-free rate, and it's a good rate, finally, to your point, okay? How do you think about the opportunity cost about parking cash for too long and something like that? How do you talk to everyday Americans who are looking for alpha every once in a while? Yeah, so listen, you have people who... The, the object of money is for you to be secure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do you any good to put money in the stock market if all of a sudden you get afraid and you sell at the wrong time, you buy at the wrong time. So for those people who don't have the stomach for the stock market, treasuries. Mm -hmm. However, for those people who want to take advantage of what I think is a lifetime opportunity in a long time, because what all of this has done, these high interest rates, have forced people, as you know, out of the stock market into bonds. Some of these stocks, how do you pass them up? I mean, you have to go into them. Now, do you go into them with everything that you have? No. Do you dollar cost average into them and take advantage of days like the past? Yes. And I think you'll be making a big mistake if you park your money forever in bonds. All right, so Susie, I got to ask you. I, I, as I said, as she said, we think of you almost like a fast money trader. Um, what is it that you're looking? What's in your portfolio? What's in your wallet? So many <laughs> things. A lot of stocks yeah. are there, but my one sad thing that happened was Pioneer PXD got bought out, or we'll see if it goes through to buy Exxon, and that was my big dividend player because I felt solid with that company. It was a nice dividend. You had growth. They were down. They went from 280 all the way down to 188. How could you not buy it? And now here it is, and it's being taken away. And I don't love Exxon as much as Pioneer. So we'll just see how that plays out. However, if I'm not looking for a dividend, and I'm looking for growth. I love Amazon. I love Shopify. I love Broadcom. I love Microsoft, which I did yesterday. Right? I love some of these stocks that you just have to be a part of. That's all. Do you Palantir? That? We were just talking about Microsoft, you know, because they reported earnings after the belt. Good earnings reports so far. Good conference call so far. The stock is popping. All of these guys said that they would prefer Alphabet over Microsoft because of the valuation. How do you look at, you said these are stocks you want to be a part of for the long term versus the valuation it's at today? Well, they're the traders. What do I know? But I don't like Alphabet, <laughs> right? Just personally, for some reason, I don't know why. I don't know why it's this inner feeling that they're there, that, but it, they feel old to me. They just feel old, like is it always going to be their search, their this. So 
I like Microsoft. I like how they were involved a long time ago with AI. Who knows where they're going to go from here? But I like that. So I would do Microsoft over Alphabet. I have to mm -hmm. ask you, Susie, what is the return on your portfolio? Negative 20%. No. no. <laughs> so it depends. I have some serious yeah. losers at this point. However, I don't care. Because I don't want to buy a stock on dollar cost averaging it into it and hope it goes up. I want to buy a stock and I hope it goes down. And I hope it goes further down and down so I can accumulate more. Palantir is a perfect one. I started at seven, went all the way up, and I'm like, don't go up, don't go up. <laughs> and now I have to wait till she comes back down again. Right? But so I don't have a problem when I bought a stock and I'm down with it because I buy it long term. I'm not a trader with it. Yeah.